Hey, this is Nathan Florence of We Are Change Rhode Island. I've uh, been using this graphic for years right now. I thought I'd just talk over it. Thank you, Nate Evans, for creating this. I'm about to interview Dr. Margaret Linen. She is as legit as they come when it comes to climatologists and uh, politicians. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey there. Excuse me? I had a question I didn't get to ask. Are you aware of uh, any geoengineering programs going on in the U.S. right now? Are we... Uh, a few people that are doing this, you know, sort of with their own funds. Yeah. Whereabouts? Like, do you know where I can... There, uh, there's a group from Stanford uh -huh. from the high state. How are you? I really miss you. That was horrific. I think, oh, Margaret, <laughs> you're where you need to be. That's really what. Did you did you do a session at the National Council for Science of the Environment meeting? Two no. Weeks ago? My I had an eye problem and I, I couldn't go. I saw you on the schedule and I went by. Maybe I've got to find you somewhere. I'd love to see you. Right. Just uh, have you seen Thank any you. of the? Because uh, I saw on the internet and other places that they, some researchers have found some evidence of geo geoengineering, and they point to like uh, particulates being added to jet aerosol. Uh, yeah, the chemtrail yes. thing. Yeah, okay. and the barium salts and the aluminum and the effect on okay. health. The concentrations yeah. of barium and aluminum that they're talking about are so small. Mm -hmm. I mean, dust is an aluminum silicate. It's most right. You know, it has a very high concentration. So uh, there's dust everywhere. In your opinion, are the chemtrails real, or is that an uh, internet kind of hoax? No, that's I believe. I absolutely believe that to be an internet, you know, issue. And the, there, there are a couple of, you know, irrespective of whether you believe in conspiracies or you don't. Ah, I just like primary, to. Uh, yeah. Primary evidence that this is not something that the government is doing comes from what happened after 9/11. Remember all of the, all of the. Um, Planes were grounded, yeah. grounded for a week, yep. and so they, were, you know, you can measure what the the uh, uh, particulates were before and after, mm -hmm. and there is no evidence. That so what would I tell people that, that point to the the high levels of like aluminum and barium salts in the soil that are uh, observing them? They're, they're no higher than it would be expected from normal dust. Okay. Being in Soil is large in this area, mm -hmm. in most areas of the U.S. It's clay minerals, and those minerals have concentrated. They are. They yeah. Okay. Uh, when they, they'll often talk to you about measuring this in water or in snow, mm -hmm. and it takes such a small concentration of aluminum, okay. uh, of dust, to to have the concentrations that they're talking about. They're really very small. What? Okay, just one more thing. I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, what would you say to the people, there have been allegations made, again this is, you know, internet things, uh, allegations made that climate science is really about the creation of glo global government with a carbon tax to fund the new economy. Did you? Well, a lot of things have, I mean, the IPCC and the, uh, what's the other group there? Um, well, I would, what I would say mm -hmm. is, uh, oh, the Club of Rome. I've read some of their writings, and they talk about humanity being the real enemy, and that we need uh, population reduction is something that people are very concerned with. That this is actually an agenda to control the freedom of humanity to, to po their own population. So, are you saying that, that they've put the CO2 in the atmosphere in order to have this result? Uh, no, people actually believe that CO2 isn't an enemy, to, and that the climate has always been changing over centuries, millennia and that this is just really a thing that they can focus on because it's the basis of all, all our economy, all our energy, and essentially people as well. It, you saw Bill Gates say at that TED conference when he was talking about innovating to zero that carbon equal, equals people. And people like uh, science, uh, the science czar John Holdren in his 1976 book Ecoscience advocated putting sterilants in the drinking water of to no, so that people would become sterile and couldn't reproduce, and that the real the real end goal here is population reduction. And he has said that that was a pretty silly thing to, to have said. Uh, he has repudiated that mm -hmm. uh, very clearly. Here 
irrespective of that, I think the thing to, to, to focus on is, you know, it's a valid question, is this change that we're seeing a result of the CO2 or is it natural variability? Yeah. And there are several things that, that are several uh, very different ways that you can come at this. Yeah. First, uh, we absolutely have been able to show using uh, climate models mm -hmm. that if you take CO2 out of the equation and you include all the aerosols, all the black carbon, yeah. all the, the variations that we know about, you can show all of the temperature variation over the last several thousand years yeah. and, and you can model it without CO2. But mm -hmm. you cannot do that for the last 150 years. You have to have the CO2, right. or we would be much cooler than we are now. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, interesting. I uh, like your opinions on things. No? So I like anyway, I'm being filmed for what? Oh, just to show my friends and stuff, like a little <laughs> video blog. Yeah. Just ask questions. Have, goes have viral people. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, oh, good. I, I mean, you know, if people are interested oh, enough. Again, that was Dr. Margaret Leinen. You can look her up online, L E I N E N. Here comes some bonus footage. And man, when we filmed that, it was cold outside. Frigid. Frigid, frigid. I should have got shots of her outside. Anyway, here's some bonus footage. Alright, uh, first off, I'd like to ask. Carbon dioxide is to is uh, what plants breathe. Am I correct? Carbon, carbon dioxide is what's, what plants breathe, right? It's like oxygen, oxygen to us. Am I correct? They they use the CO two and combine it with water and make their organic material. Okay, so wouldn't it only make sense that if there's more CO two in the air, that there'd be more vegetation? Uh, there is uh, a fertilization effect, if you will, for plants. Um, yeah. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, based on big experiments in the open air that are where they put extra CO2 uh, into the, the environment, as well as laboratory experiments, that uh, when you, if you double CO2 relative to their, their standard, which was about 375 parts per million, uh, that, that uh, at the beginning there is a fertilization effect. But after a while, it starts being a negative effect. And the reason is that, that for terrestrial plants, they start closing their stoma because they can't, uh, they can't use all of the CO2. And so by closing the stoma, they start closing down that effect and they don't use as much of it. There are also uh, a number of uh, very complex interactions that have to do with the rest of the metabolism of plants. Uh, that, that clearly show that uh, the fertilization effect does not go beyond uh, a certain amount. And then at the same time, you have the, the negative components of the, the additional CO2. Uh, essentially, the, in, in oceans, the acidification on land, primarily the climate impact. So what you're saying is that essentially have effectively no Effect at all on the uh, it's complicated, but their first they they would they would increase their fertility uh, and ha probably have increased their fertility somewhat, but we would have to stop putting CO2 in the atmosphere in order for that fertility to be actually be scrubbing. We're putting so much in that the small fertilization effect doesn't offset it at all.